talk would be something like like because the ceramic materials are advanced materials. So uh, before starting what is a nano ceramic material, let me introduce what is a ceramic material first of all and what are the possible applications of this material because these are different from normal metallic materials or polymeric materials. So I'll take few minutes to introduce what is the ceramic and what kind of ceramics we are going to deal with in this present lecture. And then the issues with the ceramic materials mainly related to powder processing. So I will introduce some of the concepts of this powder processing so that you have a basic background on this ceramic process, ceramic materials uh, uh, preparation, ceramic component preparation. So as I understand, uh, uh, I mean, this particular group uh, is faculty members from different institutes. Uh, so I hope it is very much useful uh, for those who would like to have a career uh, of academics or research in advanced materials. Uh, so for that purpose, I start with some introduction of the ceramic materials they're processing, then go with the actual nano ceramic materials, the issues related to nano ceramic materials, their processing and properties, and then few of the case studies and and then I will summarize. OK, so. Uh, yeah, before starting, uh, these are some of the important references I have used for preparing this lecture, right? And uh, yeah, one of these books are ours, OK? And mainly the information available from different sources that include websites uh, is also used for preparing this lecture because it is for the academic purpose. I think we can use it and further uses also must be restricted to academic purpose. Yeah, Dr. Prasad, am I audible clearly? Is it OK? Very good, sir. Uh, yeah, OK. Audio is very clear. Yeah, yes. and screen is also visible, right? Yeah, yeah, yes. OK, OK, so. Yeah, so ceramics are different materials. Uh, so the word ceramics actually derived from the Greek word keramos. Keramos means a pottery. Actually, it started with the pottery which in turn is derived from older Sanskrit root meaning to, to burn. So keramos is to burn. So material which can be burnt is the ceramic material. So that indicates that this is a different class of materials that is actually made burn to prepare a component out of it. So classically a ceramic material is defined as a material belong to an inorganic non-metallic material classification. So that can be either processed or used at high temperatures and have an ionic bonding or covalent bonding or ionic and covalent bonding. So there are mainly three issues in the definition of ceramics itself, particularly what kind of material it is inorganic non-metallic materials and what kind of applications or uses they have, they can be used at high temperatures mainly, right? And so they are processed also at high temperatures, okay? So why is it so? Because their bonding is inherently different from the other classes of materials like metals and polymers. So the bonding in a ceramic compound is ionic bonding or covalent bonding, remember, these two are the primary bondings which are very stronger than the other bonding, metallic bonding, right? Or a secondary bonding, Van der Waal bonding. So they are bonding wise different. So they have, they are named as a different material classification like ceramics. So again, going into the ceramic materials, we need to know that these ceramics are generally used for traditional purposes like if you have a tiles, you know, domestic purposes are uh, so. So these domestic or traditional ceramics are mainly compounds containing the anionic complex of SiO4. That is, you know, silicate group containing uh, ceramics are mainly named as traditional ceramics. Whereas the other major classification of the ceramics 
uh, is advanced ceramics or engineering ceramics. Okay, so those engineering ceramics are the ceramics which we are interested in 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 preparing some components for engineering applications. Those include both oxide compounds or non-oxide compounds, right? So oxide ceramics are very famous examples for oxide ceramics are alumina, Al2O3, zirconia, zirco, ZrO2, ceria, magnesia, etc. Where are they? Whereas there are very very important class of this advanced ceramics, non-oxide ceramics like carbides, nitrides, borides, like silicon carbide, silicon nitride, titanium borite, titanium nitride. So there are there are several ceramic materials for engineering applications. So out of these ceramic materials for engineering applications, the present interest for this lecture is for the structural application. That means those ceramics used for mechanical functions are actually structural ceramics. So among the advanced ceramics are oxides or non-oxides. We can still define a structural category of ceramics. That means they are used only for the mechanical functions purposes. What do you mean by that? When I say that fulfill the mechanical functions, they must have typical properties like low density, right? So high compressive strength, very high hardness, very high elastic modulus, and their, their resistance against oxidation and creep. So they are basically used for structural applications. So density is the most important property that we always look for such ceramics. And because they are used in mechanical functions under loading, the loading actually gives a compressive uh, condition, compressive situation at the contact. That compressive situation will actually give a lot, you know, improved strength. Uh, I mean, in compressive situations, these ceramics behave strongly. Whereas in tensile loading conditions, they behave very, very poor. So uh, they have certain problems. So we'll discuss with that. And then they have very high hardness, elastic modulus, because they have a very strong bonding mm -hmm. of ionic or coolant. The elastic modulus is much higher. And they are more like inert materials in many chemical environments, and they are very much superior against oxidation, creep, etc. But the only problem with the structural ceramics, not only for the structural ceramics, for all kinds of ceramics, the fracture toughness is moderate or even less. What do you mean by fracture toughness? Because this is a resistance against the propagation of crack. Okay. So they basically have a very, very less value of this fracture toughness or in some ceramics, their moderate fracture toughness. So when I say more about properties, unless I tell you, I show you some values, you may not realize what kind of high modulus, high hardness, you know, low fracture toughness. What do you mean by those? So this can be clear by this comparative, you know, table. Sorry, there is some disturbance, it seems. Somebody Rajesh, please mute. Rajesh, please mute all of us except uh, this is person, sir. Come on, come on, come on. Okay, thank you. So basically this table shows three categories of materials. The first three rows are typically for the metallic materials like steel, cast iron, aluminum alloys, whereas the other four rows are, are ceramic material, oxides and non-oxides. Whereas the other rows actually have a data for the polymeric materials. This is just to show you what kind of materials we are going to understand in this lecture. Okay. Now you see the density of the steels is around seven to eight gram per cc, whereas these ceramics have lower density because they that is the purpose why you know that, that is the reason why these are used for many structural applications. Of course, polymers have even lower density, right? Because polymers are nothing but macromolecular chain structures, right? So with carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen kind, so so car, so so you have carbon carbon bonding coolant, but Chain to chain bonding is poor Van der Waal bonding, right? So that actually reflects in elastic modulus, very, very poor. You see here, 
right module density is poor because the elements involved in this are very very lighter elements next are the ceramics next are the steel materials or metallic materials right in increasing order whereas elastic modulus is much higher for ceramics because they have a covalent bonding or ionic bonding next are the metallic bonding materials like metals and then the polymeric magnetic materials and you see the wicker's hardness hardness number hardness in gigapascal see the higher hardness is only for the ceramic materials something like uh, you know 9 uh, gpa for a uh, uh, sort of typical steel material you see 19 or 20 something like more than two two times right so we are talking about a material which have such a higher hardness okay so and then the toughness thermal conductivity you can see the ra range of thermal conductivity some are poor conductors whereas others are moderate conductors of heat whereas metals of course have a higher values of thermal conductivity and polymers low so and then remaining is this toughness right so toughness is much lower than the metallic materials because of the deformation negligible deformation characteristic toughness is very very less and and then metals have Lower, uh, higher toughness value, almost ten times more than the ceramic toughness. Okay, so this is the overall idea of ceramic materials and the kind of properties they have. So we have a separate set of applications in which nano uh, structured ceramic materials can give you a overall benefit. Okay, so before introducing such nano materials of ceramics. nature then I'll, let me just give a brief view, overview of uh, you know applications of such ceramics so i just collected from different sources of alumina that is oxide ceramics or non oxide ceramics alumina ceramics oxide ceramics right so they are used for many applications like cutting tool inserts you know ball bearing applications or hip replacement uh, system you have this ball made of alumina right and uh, and and this 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 is the femoral you know femur bone like this is the longest bone in your body right and then this is made with metallic materials like stainless steel or titanium alloys but this ball material is made with the ceramic material alumina because of the good properties in your body environment and also very high hardness and abrasion resistance it has it has a tremendous application in the hip replacement you see the other part of this this overall cup kind of thing here you have a polymeric material ultra high poly ultra high molecular weight polyethylene so this is a classical example of metal ceramic and polymer all together made a system of hip that is a hip system right so for the replacement of hip you have different choices for the parts another uh, oxide ceramic like micro gears applications ball bearings you know dental crowns is zirconia is used mainly for the aesthetic purpose zirconia is preferred and this is in your oral environment this is inert and then resist your uh, against the wear when you are chewing or eating the food also this is used in uh, uh, knee replacements other materials of ceramics this is non oxide ceramic silicon carbide and because silicon carbide has a main uh, mainly uh, covalent bonding characteristics and uh, they are used very strong very very you know applications where high hardness and high temperature resistance are needed so like ball bearings right are bullet proof vests are some thrusters or nozzles right so there are many applications of the non oxide ceramics ceram silicon carbide another non oxide ceramics very important silicon nitride silicon nitride used in balls in a hybrid bearing what do you mean by hybrid bearing the the dresser is made with the steel whereas the balls are of silicon nitride right or mechanical seals turbocharger components even a cantilever in afm probably you are all aware what is this and afm right atomic force microscope so in which you have this irregularities in the surfaces red, red by the cantilever having a tip right this tip is made with silicon nitride our whole body of cantilever along with the tip it made with silicon nitride because it has a good modulus of elasticity it will not deflect while taking the reading of your surface irregularities right 
are there also used as a cutting tool inserts or nasa uses thrusters because it it actually resist you know uh, it is it is it's it is sustained in the high temperature gas uh, environment you know and 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 uh, and you can see some interbody body uh, fusion devices like you have you know uh, somebody having a have, have a problem with your spinal cord right so some of the discs are replaced with silicon nitride so these are all already used applications for different materials of ceramics before going further let me just to give a very very uh, interesting application of the ceramic materials both oxides and non oxide ceramic materials like aluminum oxide boron carbide silicon carbide titanium boride so for ceramic armor applications for defense so this this ceramic armor component has a major portion of ceramic which is a discontinuous phase and it is enveloped uh, uh, in with the outer hard skin and a, and the inner ductile screen where the person or the equipment is protected from the high energy projectile coming and hitting on this the purpose of using the ceramic portion is extreme high hardness is required because when when the material is this projectile is coming and hitting with a very large amount of kinetic energy the energy has to be dissipated right so extremely hard materials like this oxides and non oxide ceramic materials they even shatter the incoming projectile so the projectile will be deformed or shattered because of the very very high hardness hardness is something like 20 30 gpa p4c has hardness more than 35 gpa right something like high very high hardness so this projectile will be shattered even if there is some energy remained that will be used for immediate cracking on fracture of the of ceramic material because they are extremely brittle right so energy absorbed by by the ceramic material so so the so the comp, the equipment or the person wearing this bulletproof vests kind of applications they are uh, these persons or equipments are safe right these are some of the you know photographs of silicon carbide based uh, bulletproof vest component just before closing this application part let me just give a very interesting application where the ceramics are only preferred no other material can be preferred so this is in aerospace right so you see this is a spacecraft right so spacecraft uh, uh, role is to go to the space i mean into the space carry the your satellite and then launch over there come back right if you if you if you do not reuse this spacecraft then lot of loss uh, with respect to you know you know expenses involved in 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 building such a huge spacecraft you know the the structure of the spacecraft is of course made by the steel right but but outer skin is actually covered with ceramic tiles mold mostly silicon oxide silicon oxide tiles are glued on the outer surface of this spacecraft because the silicon oxide has very high thermal diffusive thermal insulation okay thermal insulation when the heat uh, uh, hits the surface you know this this will uh, stop the heat conducting inside the comp inside the structure so the structure is safe in addition to that in addition to that you see this this nose cap right nose portion of this spacecraft are tail ends they have they are subjected to very very high temperature something like 1500 celsius 1000 celsius 1200 celsius you know while re entering into the earth's atmosphere because these spacecrafts of course travel with very high speeds right few max speeds but while entering into the earth's atmosphere right there is a additional gravitational pull so because of this very large amount of friction induced heating will be uh, possible and then this in, this actually generates a temperature close to 1500 celsius or 1000 celsius these temperatures are simulated values nobody nobody could actually measure these values of temperatures right so now the point is which material will sustain the those portions where the temperature is very high right no steel can sustain definitely no well no alloy or metallic material can sustain right so it so for example steel they, you cannot use more than 500 or 600 celsius they start degrading soften right so no other material than than a ceramic material 
what kind of ceramics a ceramics must have very high melting points like borides zirconium borides hafnium borides they have melting point itself more than 3000 celsius you can use those materials or the composites of those materials for these parts of spacecraft because you can safely use a temp, uh, them at a temperature of around 1500 1400 1000 1200 celsius right so the no degradation happens so so if you remember there was some columbia space shuttle right some 15 years ago maybe 20 years ago where uh, kalpana chawla of indian one of the crew members right so so thus thus miss happen uh, thus accident happened uh, uh, while re entering it so at its atmosphere one of the failures reasons re, fail re, one of the reasons for the failure is not selecting a suitable material for this material this kind of parts of spacecraft okay so this is some you know applications part of it so you can realize what kind of material we are trying to understand completely different from metals and polymers right so uh, the other part of this lecture will be uh, dealing with the ceramics with processing concepts and the relation with the properties and then both related via microstructure so all these ceramics designing is mainly via microstructural designing so that you you actually employ different processing concepts so as to play with the microstructure so you can have a desired set of properties for a given application whether i, I have shown several examples of you know applications of the ceramics so let me uh, yeah if you have any question kindly stop me okay because this may be a new to many on many of you so maybe definitely uh, you can stop me and ask you know questions yeah if there is no question maybe i can further i can go ahead so processing of ceramics so how do you process a ceramic component this is very important issue because the major application of ceramics says high temperature applications right why because that those ceramic materials can sustain in high temperatures now the same problem of high temperature sustainability stability makes them very much difficult for the fabrication of those components the same characteristic of high temperature uh, stability makes conventional fabrication routes unsuitable for ceramic processing what kind of conventional we are talking about we are we are talking about unconventional fabrication routes that are used for metallic materials or polymeric materials right so like you are forming extrusion forging even casting solidification route right why they are so unsuitable because the the temperature that you require for melting is itself very high so forget about casting right so you cannot do because in a in a in a in a uh, in, in an industrial practice is very difficult to maintain such high temperatures you need to first of all melt it and then and then make them uh, uh, make them uh, you know solidify to get a component shape so what about other routes like forming extrusion forging because they are so brittle you cannot make a shape out of it easily so they are unsuitable for ceramics processing okay so just give me a second okay i am just uh, interpreting so. yes i am back um, <clears throat> then uh, if conventional fabrication routes are not suitable then how do you process a ceramic component you can process by powder processing right so powder processing what do you mean by powder processing you start with some powder right and you have a powder with a specific characteristics and then you compact the powders mixture and then make it heating so that you get a densified product for using in different applications 
so typically the powder processing of ceramics <coughs> has three route three steps powder synthesis compaction and sintering so there are many synthesis of powder synthesis uh, routes for the powders both chemical synthesis or mechanical synthesis chemical synthesis include chemical vapor deposition inert gas condensation precipitation or coprecipitation pyrolysis sol gel etc whereas mechanical synthesis importantly ball milling so just to uh, con consider this uh, time constraint i am just giving some concepts of ball milling only here right ball milling is widely used in laboratory as well as in industries because it is so easily adoptable the pro the mainly ball milling is done to reduce the starting particle size powder feed by comminution by size reduction so by crushing so you can actually reduce the size so there is a time optimum time beyond which even if you crush further if you prolong the milling the size of the crystallite will not be reduced further there will be a there will be agglomeration or agglomeration or shape sh uh, rounding of these particles so we need to uh, 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 identify a suitable melting time with variables of this powder to metal ratio ma material powder ratio powder to balls balls ratio and then the speed duration so we can actually have very very efficient crushing efficient comminution that is efficient particle size reduction so mainly these powders are kept inside the jar the jar is made with a very hard material inside because ceramics are hard material powder and then balls are also fusion as they the uh, they have very high hardness like tungsten carbide zirconia so these are used and these are kept inside this uh, and then they are made rotating right because of the rotation there happens high energy collision and that shears uh, that that the that actually shears the hard balls and powders that lead to power particle size reduction as well as the internal grain size reduction so this gives the very large yield and very simple in procedure so but the problem with this is result in contamination because you are using so much foreign material and for a long time if you do this milling then you will have a problem with the contamination and even the size reduction is not so uniform that you will end up with a broad size distribution and there happens a limit beyond which there is no further refining of the size of the powders like in this example it is shown like the, all these fine powders are agglomerated right some of them are agglomerated so this actually gives another problem uh, so it needs to be tackled carefully the other tech, uh, root uh, other part of the uh, other step of this powder processing is compaction that means you need to compact the powders so powders are pressed into desired shape you have a die cavity of desired shape of the die and you keep these powders and then press it pressing can be done by hydraulic way or some normal mechanical way to get the compact the compact is named as green compact because it is not heated it is before the heating so it is the compact does not have a good strength that can be directly used in applications okay so it is basically uh, uh, sufficient to handle uh, this shape but not for using in the actual application so compaction can be done without heating or with heating when i say with heating the temperatures are not high as you are heating to high temperatures in sintering okay this is simply for making as many particles as possible for a single particle the coordination number to be very high so you will have a just contact between the powder particles they make a shape nothing more than that and they have a very poor strength but unless you handle this state of compaction you will not have a proper sintering so you will not have a proper densification and strength in the final application that is why it is much useful much important step the compaction compaction 
that high temperature is also possible that high temperature has a limitation as a tool so for uh, simply if you understand the compaction like if you are keeping the powder particles in a die and close this die cavity with punches upper and uh, upper and lower punches and then apply load right so because of the application of this pressure or the load here so you act for compaction what do you mean by compaction the loose powder particles are made compact right so you have the porosity reduced to a large extent here right porosity is nothing but the empty space between the particles so they are forced to have a contact with the other particles the coordination of number of each particle is increased tremendously but they are not bonded please understand they are just connected they are not bonded so that is sufficient only to have a shape nothing more than that so once the compaction is done then you can eject it right so it has basically filling the die cavity with the powder by feeding system initial and final positions of the upper and lower punches while pressing compaction and then ejection okay so once you get an ejected compact of this powder you have a shape nothing more than that so we'll see how this can be further increased in strength later in sintering part but let me tell you the cold isostatic pressing is very very famous compaction technique used for materials of ceramic because this is a unidirectional pressing if you can apply the pressure in all directions isostatic pressing so isostatic pressing so can be done can be done by wet bag or dry bag method wet bag means you keep the compact in a in a rubbery kind of material inside the fluid and the fluid exerts the pressure in all directions and then it wets the bag of this flexible bag where so you get a shape of this powder okay whereas in dry in dry bag isostatic pressing the the only radial pressure is applied between the flexible mold and the rigid shell there is a rigid shell here while the bag can rest on its top or bottom surfaces so there is this this is resting on here or here so this rigid core is again exerting some pressure on this while this fluid air surrounding this is exerting pressure on the other side so you have a dry bag or a wet bag both are used in uh, many applications so with this isostatic pressure so you can actually obtain uniform density if in the compact of green okay so pressure applied is few hundreds of mega pascals okay whereas the pressure applied in normal unidirectional compaction is few tens of mega pascals not more than that okay so this this few hundreds of mega pascals applied on the this bank results into a very very compacted very much compacted shape of this powder compact so you can get the desired shape green body without any density gradient here in the previous case of this normal compaction there can be a density gradient because there is a unidirectional compaction and there happens a friction between the die uh, die material and then the powder or the punch material and then the powder so as the distance from this this upper punch surface to the lower punch surface the distance distance is i mean you are traveling from this to this uh, along this compact thickness there is a pressure distribution because of the losses incurred with respect to the friction right so you will not have a uniform density mainly in this kind of unidirectional compaction while you can have a uniform density by applying pressure in all directions so that isostatically so you get a uniform density so high pressures are applied isostatically so you get desired shape without density gradient so this is mostly used compaction technique than this normal compaction for many many engineering applications okay for laboratory purposes we use this or this for mainly engineering for industrial practices this is mostly used let me now give you a brief idea about the most important step in processing such ceramic powders this is sintering what do you mean by sintering it is simply heating so heating is not like you are heating while pressing in compaction right that heating temperatures are very very low 
while in sintering the temperatures are much higher what do you mean by that you mean the temperatures are much higher like more than at least more than at least more than half of the melting point of that material of powder okay melting point is in absolute scale when you when you heat such compact right you go go some compact you heat it in a you keep it in a in a crucible and heat it in a furnace right so what happens the there is a consolidation of the loose connect loosely connected powder particles and and finally giving a densified product so sintering basically refers to the process of consolidation of porous powder compact to a dense non porous solid by heating to a temperature at least more than half of the melting point by doing this heating you are actually uh, you are actually triggering the diffusional mass transport you know the diffusion is a high temperature process right temperature and time dependent process so playing with the temperature and time you can actually have desired product with with density full density that means eliminating all the porosity so basically it is a diffusion process sintering is nothing but it is diffusion what do you mean by diffusion motion of the atoms right atoms move from one location to the another location by moving across the particle surfaces inside the you know grains so you are actually making them bonding so the bonding is called metallurgical bonding grain to grain bonding is so strongly bonded that it gets a very very high strength what is the difference between the normal pressing at high temperature and sintering uh, sin the temperatures are so different in sintering the temperatures are so high some some, some ceramic materials they require sintering close to melting point like, like 0.8 or 0.9 times of melting point of material okay so this is basically a process due to the motion of atoms right because by the word of diffusion so you can understand this is a motion of atoms so the motion of atoms actually occurs at high temperatures and reduction in the surface energy associated with the particle particles have some surface they have the surface energy and surface energy needs to be reduced by heating it you can have a driving force of reducing this surface energy so before going into the nano ceramics issues let me just brief you about the very very important points about the sintering those are amplified in the nano ceramic case okay what are those with respect to sintering the problems related to microscopic curvatures right so that actually cause bonding between the particles so while heating to high temperatures so there needs minimum driving force for having a desired microscopic curvatures to have a prob bonding right if you if you are aware with the laplace you know uh, transformations you know La laplace uh, tensile uh, stresses because of the shape change of the material uh, bodies so you can understand that bonding the sintering has in has some inherently some stresses right that stresses are because of the shape changes changes in the curvatures those curvatures of microscopic curvatures so sintering driving force is needed the main driving force describe the microscopic curvatures that cause the bonding once you have the driving force for the bonding to happen the atoms move right atoms move in different ways those are actually called mechanisms or ways of transportation the path of atomic motions those are called sintering mechanisms the sintering mechanism describe the path of atomic motions in response to the driving forces once you have the mechanisms that means the several ways of motion of the atoms then sintering occurs progressively in in different stages sintering stages describe the geometric progress resulting from this atomic motion so everything is connected right from the driving force in response to driving force atoms move because of the mechanisms you have a progress geometric progress that results into dense body so these are major issues 
So let me just give a few minutes about this driving force and this mechanisms and 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 uh, these stages, right? Me driving force is nothing but reduction of surface energy. Like you have few loose powder com powder inside the compact, right? They are simply connected. They are not bonded. So by heating, actually the driving force for the sintering is reduction in the surface energy. So caused by decreasing their vapor and solid interfaces. So you have the porosity. So each powder particle, the solid powder particle has an interface with the vapor, right? The primary purpose of doing the sintering is to reduce the interfaces of solid to vapor and increase the interfaces of solid to solid. That means you want to remove this iso this this uh, uh, this porosity, right? You want to have bonding from solid to solid between solid to solid. Right? Mathematically, you can apply D of gamma A. Gamma is the specific surface energy associated with the powder particles. A is the total surface area. Then this can be A into D gamma plus gamma into D A. So the total shall be less than zero. Then sintering happens. Okay, that means in that can be possible. You know when the first term dominates, it simply gives the densification. But the second term dominates, then you will have a coarsening of powders. In reality, you cannot have only densification excluding coarsening. So the particle coarsens while densified. So basically, you will have a coarsened and densified grains of these materials. So ideally, sintering should lead to densification like this into the most closed packed arrangement of hexagonal array of grains and should evolve from a state of loose packed spherical particles, but they have a coarsened size in addition to the densification. So the driving force actually is the reduction of the surface energy. Because of the surface energy issues, you will always have a coarsened structure with a densified product. Remember, I am telling this because we are we want to understand the nano ceramics, right? The, the coarsening must be as less as possible. Then only you will have a nano size of these grains of the ceramics after sintering. So the issue what I would like to highlight here is normal sintering cannot be done without coarsening. That means densification only cannot be achieved without having this coarsening. So coarsening along with the densification is the primary issue and you need to restrict the coarsening for preparing a nano densified ceramic material, right? Whereas mechanisms, once the driving force is available, there shall be motion of atoms, right? For example, you take a spherical particles model, so they are bonded and the bonding is nothing is called as a neck, okay? While while sintering is happening, necking size increases, and then then the the curvature changes, and then you will have total you know porosity released or re relieved. So it happens either by diffusing from surface to surface, or by grain boundary to uh, grain boundary to the neck, right? Uh, or the movement of dislocations, or the liquid, if at all there is a liquid forming material that also diffuse and then necking size increases. Or there may be a bulk of the material moving from inside the particle to the surface where the necking happens. So primarily the aim of the sintering is to increase the necking, right? So destination is always necking, neck portion. The sources is different. So based on the sources, you have different mechanisms or pathways for the motion of atoms in sintering. So driving force is available. Most atomic atoms will move from one location to another by these different mechanisms and that lead to different stages, right? There is a geometrical change. So progressively there is a dramatical change like initially initial stage of the sintering that leads with a very, very fine, a very less densification relative density is very less. Whereas second stage where the neck will grow, right? I told you the primary aim of sintering is to increase the densification, necking increase. So that means the shrinkage of the compact shall be as has as possible. So this is possible by continuous pore phase 
eliminate um, uh, continuous pore phase. So finally, when it enters the last stage of centering, this porosity will be isolated and then removed. And here, the growth of the grains will be much larger, whereas intermediate stage, densification is higher than the growth. I told you, centering is is centering can centering is possible along with this uh, you know densification along with the grain growth so if you can catch a point here you can play with the centering cycle in a such a way that this final stage can be as as less as possible so that the grain growth can be reduced but intermediate stage men can be as high as possible as high as possible or as long as possible so that densification is more so then you will end up with a dense but restricted coarsening of the product in nano ceramics development right so this is sample of glass spheres right here you see this is a initially initially this is this necking starting necking increasing you see the size of the necking increases finally it reaches to this well so smaller is the size of the initial particle faster is your densification you require less time for densifying the same particles but with a size less compared to the particles with a larger size right so this is some relation for understanding the time required with the size of the particles lesser is the size of the particle lesser is the time required for sintering to a desired level of density so with this you can actually have one point again for producing a nano ceramic material you need to restrict the grain size that is why you say nano right the size of the grain is as nano so but densification must be done to a higher value close to 100% or 99% like so how do you do you can actually increase the sintering rate you can reduce the sintering so initially the size of the particle must be as low as possible then you can actually complete the for process of centering in less time less time less pros, less possibility for the coarsening right i hope this is clear from this understanding so i told you the diffusion can also happen via liquid that means in addition to the solid particles of ceramic materials sometimes you add some foreign material which will be melted while heating to a higher temperature for example for example silicon carbide you know heated uh, yeah here there are some example titanium carbonitride with the nickel nickel is low melting material because it is a metal titanium carbonitride is a higher melting point material this is a ceramic material ceramic with some amount of metal metal will be melted while heating to a high temperature where sintering happens right so when you have a melt of metal then you have this liquid in in us in in uh, uh, interface with the solid of the ceramic powder or vapor right the porosity so there happens very very interesting phenomenon that liquid provides a braze that bonds these grains together so with a faster diffusion rate so this centering is called liquid phase centering otherwise it is by default normal centering called solid state centering no liquid available when liquid is available by this type of application this type of material like tungsten carbide cobalt cobalt is a metal which melts at lower temperature so it melts and this liquid will wet the particles of solid tungsten carbide and then the diffusion happens fast so they the particles of tungsten carbide are brought brought closer so there happens easy diffusion and then there you will have diffusion easily right so by selecting a proper material for liquid phase forming material you can have a proper liquid phase material to get a good density so that requires essentially wetting of this liquid to the solid right the liquid must spread over the solid grains so basically you have all this centering possible with solid state centering or liquid phase centering and mostly all engineering applications when and where possible liquid phase centering is adopted because that that actually completes in a less time requires a lower temperature shorter time right so you have possibility for having a dense and coarse restricted coarsened structure uh, like nano okay so 
these are some major concepts of liquid phase uh, so centering uh, solid state centering and the centering is the major step after compaction right and 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 you have this centering you know if you if you uh, if you control the centering you will end up with a tailored microstructure of this ceramic material and that you require to have for developing a nano ceramic material so now we are we are on a we are on a you know base platform where we understand what is ceramic material what e what are the applications of those ceramic materials and how the ceramics components are processed processed mainly by powder processing powder processing involves three major steps of powder synthesis or second step of compacting the powder and keeping it keeping it keeping in a furnace and heating it so that the sintering happens diffusion transport of mass happens so that you have a consolidated product so while sintering there is always a possibility of coarsening while along with the densification so you do not end up with a restricted grain size of the dense ceramic material so but the purpose of this lecture is to understand the nano ceramics that means the size of the grains must be must be as low as possible at least 100 nanometers are close to 100 nanometer then we call this is nano structured ceramic material okay so now let me just go through the nano ceramics right that we know nano ceramics by definition nano ceramics are nano ceramic composites defined by nihara right this is a famous scientist from japan who actually pioneered the processing of nano ceramic composite materials so where the definition what he has given is more or less understood as a classical definition for a nano ceramic or nano ceramic composite material what is the definition definition is you can call a material a nano ceramic or nano ceramic composite when at least one ceramic phase with length scale in one or more dimension in nanometer range nanometer range is less than 100 nanometers if if you have monolithic ceramic only one phase ceramic the grain the phase the phase length is at least in one dimension at least in one dimension like some some ceramics have grains equiaxed or elongated right at least in one direction the dimension is less than 100 nanometers you can call it as nano ceramic material or a composite of ceramic in which at least one phase has length or dimension less than 100 nanometers you can call this as nano ceramic materials so before doing this you you can just see here this schematic from for the generalized nano structured material this is not for only ceramic material okay so nano structured materials can be can be any one of them right so you can see here so you you can have a powder material right or layered one after the other or there are you know two dimensional nano structured material or the three dimensional at volume wise one phase is more like precipitates or some inclusions right so basically from the dimensional point of view you can actually have a zero dimensional nano structured material one dimensional nano structured material two dimensional nano structured material or three dimensional nano structured material if the material is of ceramic we call nano ceramic material or nano ceramic or nano ceramic composite material okay so it is written as nano composites contain two or more phases either of them having dimensions less than 100 nanometers we call nano ceramic composite material so please note that smaller grain sizes with concomitant presence of higher volume fraction of atoms at interfaces lead to novel properties so that is the reason why nano ceramics have attained larger attraction in the ceramics community and mainly the structure microstructure and the properties correlations of this nano materials will provide inside into their performance in a given application this is the reason why we are going to study the part of your nano ceramics in this lecture okay so all applications of ceramics 
can be applications of nano ceramics right basically the performance of those applications are expected to improve if the size of one at least one phase of that ceramic material is made less than 100 nanometers then you will have a improved property that is only expectation i repeat this is only expectation but there are certain issues certain instances where this expectation is not met okay still this nano ceramic material is in the infancy development of nano ceramic material is still in infancy okay but the intended applications for such nano structured ceramic materials are ceramic parts for automotive engines with superior performance cutting tools heat engine components wear resistance parts aerostat aerospace related industrial applications ultra fine filter applications you know flexible superconducting wire fiber optic connected components you name any field of like automotive to defense to aerospace to biomedical to agriculture you need any you you name any field you have these ceramic materials uses and when the structure is made nano then you have improvement of those performance okay so then okay then what is the major challenge in developing why it is so so great about this nano ceramic development can't you actually develop as you are developing non normal ceramic materials no the major challenge in development of this nano ceramic material is restricting the grain growth that i already have told you while sintering comes and while making you understand the sintering concept the restriction of the grain growth during processing is extremely difficult using conventional sintering techniques you need a different sintering technique to prepare a material of ceramic with a nano structure nano grain size okay so how do you do this one <clears throat> so before going again into the development of such specialized materials of nano ceramics let me just give you an overall hypo, uh, you know uh, hypothesis of nano ceramic composites okay so the composite of nano ceramic can be intergranular nano composite now you know what is the meaning of nano composite composite has more than two or more or more phases at least one phase must have a size of dimension less than 100 nanometer then you call nano composite then again within this nano composite it can be intergranular nano composite the phase what you are talking about nano is along the grain boundaries only along the grain boundaries whereas the grain matrix is of not nano scale that can be micron meter or more than that so this can be defined as a intergranular nano composite why uh, is it so important it is important because this can improve the creep resistance i hope you have some idea about what is creep and resistance against creep right so creep is nothing but a deformation but it happens at a longer time for a given stress level at a higher temperature right if you heat it it more than eco cohesive temperature the deformation happens as a function of time that is creep so mainly all materials will will be subjected to creep if you subject this material for certain stress at for a longer time right so at high temperature this is predominant because at high temperatures the deformation occurs via grain boundary movement sliding one of the mechanisms of creep is grain boundary sliding if the grain boundary is having this nano phase the movement will dif will become difficult once the movement becomes difficult grain boundaries are pinned they are not moved freely right easily so the grain boundary sliding is restricted so you will have a creep resistance okay you require such kind of nano ceramic composite intergranular right for turbine blade applications let us say for example turbine blade applications where creep is very important silicon nitride based nano composites silicon nitride based composites of right they are preferred for these composites for these applications or it can be intragranular this is inter and this is intragranular what do you mean intra within the grain the nano phase is existing so you can process a material of composite which can have a nano phased reinforcement inside the matrix of na of micron size 
okay this can be intragranular nanocomposite this actually results into increased strength of the grain boundary and toughness fracture toughness that is a measure for uh, uh, measure of this fracture toughness is k1c this is called k1c fracture toughness measure stress intensity factor critical stress intensity factor and may mode one opening of crack that i do not want to go ahead what is this just understand this is a measure of fracture toughness strength of this grain boundary and toughness fracture toughness of this material will be improved because the crack will propagate only through grain that is transgranular fracture so in overall crack will be difficult to propagate from this location to this location you need to give large amount of energy so the fracture toughness increases okay or there can be a combination of these inter as well as intra right so this can give good grip resistance as well as high strength high strength of the grain boundaries and fracture toughness or there can be nano nano both reinforcement as well as matrix can be nano scale this one give grain boundary sliding easily so super plasticity can be obtained or there can be a nano micron that means reinforcement is is in micron size whereas the matrix is in nano size this also can give certain you know uh, properties to have in supply and application so with this preamble of ceramic nano composites let me give you an idea of what are the major issues in processing these specialized materials first of all now with the basic idea of synth for synthesizing the metal powders compaction centering right so you have problems in each stage if you want to prepare a nano ceramic material how is it you need to have cost effective synthesis route to obtain non agglomerated nano crystalline ceramic powders as i have already told you right in in the previous one of this previous slides that as the size is reduced to certain limit further ball milling or synthesis will not give you will further reduction in the size and rather the small sized powders will be agglomerated uh, so non agglomerated ceramic powders obtaining is very difficult that cost effective synthesis is required synthesis route is required then in compaction compaction of such nano particles right we start with the nano particles then only you will end up with a nano crystalline structure right so you need to start with a nano particle nano sized particles to obtain green body without cracks or density gradients so it is very very difficult to have a green body without this def defects of grain cracks or density gradients when you have the particle size very very less right so once you get the compaction also done the next step is this sintering so sintering so sintering uh, you are aiming for densification for structural applications right so while achieving full densification there is a grain growth so inhibition of those grain growth is a major issue how do you inhibit it right otherwise you will end up with a larger grain size so grain will be definitely coarser you start with a nano particle but you will end up with a very large size if you do not maintain the proper grain growth mechanisms okay this is very much difficult with the small sized particles of so retention of this nano size grains or particulates and dispersion of this nano response when in the matrix is extremely difficult so the processing of such specialized materials is difficult but i said difficult but i did not say impossible right so this is the way why uh, we actually do the research for understanding the densification and grain growth phenomenon right so then how to process nano ceramics so by this time you may be now aware you must have some idea if you want to have a nano ceramics you need to process in a such a way that particle coarsening or grain coarsening must be suppressed at the same time densification must be achieved to a higher level right these are two requirements for processing a nano ceramic material then how do you do first of all, that is the question the solution for the question is you can lower the sintering time and temperature how why because because i told you sintering actually is a diffusion process right 
that requires higher temperature longer time. If you give higher temperature, then grain growth is possible, right? If you remember the stage of the sintering, third stage, final stage, where the grain growth dominates than the densification. So if you do not give higher temperature and longer time, where the diffusion is, is extensively less compared to the second stage, then final product will have a restricted grain growth. Whereas it already crossed the second stage, the densification achieved a maximum. So you play with this time and temperature so as to play, so as to obtain this restricted grain at the same time high densification by lowering sintering time and sintering temperature is the best solution to prepare a nano ceramic. So saying so is easy, but maintaining such lower temperature and and low, uh, sh uh, lower time, you know, shorter time uh, is not preferred, right? So how do you how do you do this magic? You can do this actually. Conventional sintering it is also called pressureless sintering. Okay, there is a pressurized sintering another category. Whatever we are talking. We are we are re, we we are learning now is a pressure less sintering. There is no pressure applied. It is simply heating. You put the powder compact in a furnace in a crucible in the furnace and then heat it. No pressure applied. It is simply thermal energy which you are giving. That is called pressure less sintering. So conventionally this is pressure less sintering. Then conventional pressure less sintering can give nano ceramics. Yes. Then how do you do? You need to adopt a strategy of Normally, you heat to a high temperature because you need densification, right? Diffusion must happen, but you do not give longer time at that high temperature. What do you mean by that? Higher temperature, longer time fails to restrict the considerable grain growth. So in that sense, you can do centering in two steps. A scheme of two step centering was proposed long back or almost like 22 years. This is very, very famous. Uh, research uh, study where this two step centering scheme holding at a lower temperature after reaching peak densification temperature, then you can obtain nano crystalline grain size, something like this. You see, this is relative density versus grain size for a nano yttria powder. Y2O3 is an oxide powder of ceramic, right? Oxide powder, yttrium oxide. How did they achieve? They achieved the nano size by heating to a temperature T1 and immediately reducing the temperature to T2 and then heating and then prolonging time. If you if if you prolong at this peak temperature where densification happens, then grain growth will be extensively large. For that, you need to reduce the temperature, not heating, you need to cool it, right? After achieving this peak temp temp temperature, you cool it and then prolong it. Then why do you cool it? As I told you, you need to de decrease the diffusion that leads to the grain growth, right? So you are playing with the two components of the driving force, gamma dA plus this dA, d gamma, dA gamma, right? So the first component is much larger when you heat it to this, but the second component is larger here. So you reduce the temperature so that the second component leading to grain growth will be restricted, right? Will be restricted. So like this is the actual data for this yttria. So two step sintering, two step sintering, increasing to a higher temperature of 1250 degrees Celsius and, and then immediately reducing the temperature so that at 1150 degrees Celsius for longer time. And I'll also this is done with a different scheme of 1310 and immediately T2 will be 1150. Compared to the normal sintering where it is done, it is done at a higher temperature of higher temperature of this 1300 or 1310 right so not doing at only one temperature you can do two step sintering right so that you obtain the grain size restricted to 100 120 nanometers right well at the same time obtaining 100% density very very high la large amount of i mean 99% density same 99% density is obtained in normal centering, but the grain size is 450 nanometers. You see the change from 450 nanometers. They could actually reduce the grain size to 150, 120 nanometers. This is the image of the sintered product 
of this nano sized yttria. So this micron bar, if you can see, this is 100 nanometers, right? So something like 100 and 110, 120 is the maximum here, right? All are less than this 100. So nano sized yttrium oxide ceramic sintered material is prepared by adopting this two step sintering via conventional technique only. So you need to adopt a sintering strategy to obtain the nano ceramics. OK, for that reason, I introduced the sintering concept to you before uh, uh, this nano ceramic development. OK, I hope this is uh, this is clear. Let me just go to another example. While two stage sintering is done with a non oxide ceramic, right? Earlier was the yttrium oxide. It is oxide ceramic. Now it is non oxide ceramic. So two stage sintering again, you see here can give you a density like 90. This is 95. This is 100. So it would be like 97 kind of thing. 97, 98 percent density, but grain size is 85 nanometers or 90 nanometers. OK, whereas in normal one, you like you see 100 close to 150 nanometers. So two stage strength centering is beneficial in reducing the size of the grain at the same time maintaining the higher level of densification. This is the image of the sintered microstructure of the microstructural image of the sintered material of silicon nitride. So so this this is also by two step sintering. So it is the only is it the only solution by doing this specialized sintering strategy? No, you can actually have a different sintering technique itself. The normal technique is the conventional pressureless sintering, right? But you can actually use different techniques which will activate the powder material and then facilitate easy sintering so that the sintering can happen at lower temperature shorter times. Then you will end up with a dense product with a restricted grain size. That is what you require, right? Sintering time shall be lowered and sintering temperature shall be lowered. That is the solution. So you can make some activated sintering techniques. Use of the activated sintering techniques make use that so that so that you can obtain a nano ceramic. Not only this conventional pressureless, you can have different non-conventional techniques like this hot pressing. Okay, so uh, uh, Dr. Prasad, uh, do we have some time for the first session of 50 minutes, or it is? Yes, sir. First yes, session is completed. Completed. Okay. Actually, so, the session, uh, sec part two session time. Actually, we are going uh, continuously. Okay. So, so uh, do I need to stop here for a break? Sure, sir. You can. For your convenience, yeah. as for your convenience, you can. We can do it. Make it a break. Yes, 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 yes. So, um, maybe we can have a short break also. Not always ten minutes. I think you can. You let me know. I am here only. Yeah. It's OK, sir. For, um, for five minutes. Uh, yeah, yeah. If, minutes. if all other agree for this, then we can go ahead. Yeah. Yes, sir. I, there are no complaints from the participants. So maybe that OK. Is OK, thank you. So we'll thank start you. after five minutes. Yeah, OK. Sure, sir. Thank you.
Rasad, can we stop? Start. Uh, I would like to welcome you back uh, for this part two session of sixth day of uh, this two weeks of TV program. So please, please ex share your expertise. On yeah. On this screen is visible. Yes, sir. It is visible. Okay. <clears throat> so, uh, in this particular uh, lecture, we started to understand. Uh, the ceramic materials, their applications in different fields and uh, the processing part of the ceramics mainly by order synthesis, compaction and centering. So all these routes, steps, steps actually uh, give some challenges when you want to prepare nano ceramics, right? So then what is the solution? Solution is to make a sintering strategy so that the temperatures required for the densification or the times required for the sintering densification can be reduced because we understand from the basic of sintering that densification is always accompanied with it coarsening so we want to restrict the coarsening so you need to have a proper strategy right so conventionally we can do by two step centering as was demonstrated in some of the research studies. Then what is the other way around for this uh, obtaining nano ceramics? By activated centering. What do you mean by activated? You can actually make a different technique of centering by that you can reduce the required temperature and time. So one of the important such techniques of activated centering is hot pressing. The hot pressing means simultaneously you are applying heating as well as pressing on the powder particle compact, right? So in the right extreme side of this slide, you can see this is inside this furnace. This is graphite tooling, the upper punch and lower punch, and there is a die here, and in between there are spacers. All are made with the graphite, okay? Inside this die, you keep a powder and then press it while heating, right? Because this chamber is covered with uh, some heating elements. So main, these heating elements will heat this chamber and then while heating, you can actually press it. So simultaneous application of heating and pressing will make this sintering possible at a lower temperature and shorter time. So because high temperature and pressure synergistically allow rearrangement of these particles schematically shown here right rearrange these particles and allow plastic flow and facilitates faster mass transport right these arrows are indicating this mass transport diffusion mechanisms only diffusion mechanisms means mass transport mechanisms so more inter inter instances of this mass transport will occur because you are you are actually pressing it while heating right so these rearrangement of particles, plastic flow and faster master, mass transport lead to enhanced neck growth, right? So these enhanced neck, neck growth will only result into easy like compact uh, uh, shrinkage and then the densification. So while doing this, activating this powder by pressing, you can obtain the centering easily. So the, the external pressure applied contributes to the additional compressive forces result in enhanced mass transport in the neck region, right? I told you the primary aim is to improve the neck region, increase the neck region. The driving force for the densification is almost in one order of magnitude higher in hard press conditions compared to conventional pressureless centering, okay? So because of this difference in the technique itself, it is named as a different activated centering technique or it is advanced centering technique. So with this centering, many oxides and non-oxide non ceramics are developed uh, uh, with, with nano uh, grain size, right? This is one example from the literature. Like you can see, 
this is the microstructure after sintering of the silicon carbide so you can see this these these grains are of very less nano nano size like 50 100 50 to 100 nanometers how did they obtain by obtaining again the two step sintering via via hard pressing like you can see here grain size versus sinter density percentage right so uh, so you have this conventional sintering on the two step sintering in between this is zero time sintering without giving any any time after peak temperature okay so the strategy the sintering conditions are given here conventional sintering so at higher temp at the sintering temperature longer times of 8 hours almost right so so zero time sintering no holding just heating whereas heating to a higher temperature immediately decreasing the temperature and then holding 1650 zero hours followed by 1500 8 hours like that you you take different samples and finally you have this density variations you can see the density obtained by two step sintering is close to 100% whereas the grain size is less than 40 or 30 nanometer right whereas the same same with the conventional sintering gave very large grain size so hard pressing hard pressing is done at a few few mega few tens of megapascals this is this was done with few tens of megapascals at high temperature the pressure relation or the information is not given here okay so this is heat treated powder with hot isostatic pressing you have seen Clo uh, cold isostatic pressing where there is only compaction hot isostatic pressing means the centering in addition to only one directional i mean instead of only one directional uh, pressing while heating you can actually apply the pressing in isostatically all directions same press same pressure applied at the same time heating right that is called hot isostatic pressing so and hot isostatic King pressed nano silicon carbide ceramics is shown here now sintered material has dimension this this micron bearer need 100 nanometers so you can see less than 100 nanometer phases here so features here so now you can see this next uh, right most uh, right, right side plot actually shows the hardness versus the d power minus 0.5 this is actually d is the average grain size so with varying conditions of this hot pressing so they could have this this these people can uh, could able to obtain uh, different grain size now d power minus half right so that means as the grain size is reducing this is towards this is reducing direction this is increasing direction right so as the grain size is de decreasing the hardness actually increases so how is it so any idea anybody can tell what is the reason behind this anyone any guess actually when the average grain size is reduced you have larger fraction of grain boundaries right so for a given microstructure if the grain size is reduced mean grain boundary fraction sorry fraction is increased so dislocation movement while deformation is restricted because you have so many obstacles of grain boundaries right because of the obstruction in the movement of dislocation the material gets hardened or strengthened if you remember this is the hall pitch relation right hall pitch relation h a l l dash p e t c h so p c h h a l l dash p c h there is names of the scientist hall pitch relation lesser is the size of the grain more is the hardness or strength right so you can see this is 10 micron meter this is towards 100 nanometers nanometers right so few tens of micron meters to 100 nanometers will give you a very large increase curse hardness from around 1600 hv to almost like 2600 hv so the purpose of preparing this nano crystalline ceramic materials 
is to improve the properties. So one of the properties in, uh, uh, improved here is shown. Another example with the hard pressed material of tungsten carbide cobalt. Now tungsten carbide is a ceramic, cobalt is a metal. This is called cermet. It is not simply a composite, it is a cermet, right? Because the other phase is different phase. This is metallic phase. The purpose of adding this metallic phase, as you could remember last time I told you, liquid phase centric, right? This becomes liquid at a lower temperature while reaching higher temperature for centering. So the liquid wets the surface of the solid and there happens a dissolution of the solid and, and then the precipitation later and then gives a liquid phase centered microstructure of this material. So other purpose of adding this cobalt is to improve the toughness, right? Because cobalt being a metal, definitely the toughness will be improved. Now you can see the fracture toughness versus the cobalt content. As the cobalt content is increased, fracture toughness increases. So, so from zero to 14 weight percent of cobalt increase, so you can see the fracture toughness increased from around you know, one MPA root meter to almost like 14 MPA root meter. Right. So, so similarly, Poisson's ratio. So, this pre material is pre was prepared with tungsten carbide with 14 weight percent cobalt at a temperature of 1973 Kelvin at very high pressures of one gigapascal. Right. One gigapascal. So, gigapascal means thousand megapascals. Right. Such a high pressure at temperature. So, maintaining such high pressure while heating is a very, very difficult task with respect to the, uh, you know, operation, right? So, so uh, I mean, if you, if any one of you belong to mechanical engineering background, then you may realize this is as a difficult process, right? So maintaining high pressure and high temperatures at the same uh, is very, very difficult process. So, so if you can have such a facility, you can have this nano crystalline material tungsten carbide with cobalt. This micron beater, micron bar is 50 nanometers. The TEM, uh, you know, this uh, SADP pattern, selected area diffraction pattern also shows the crystalline material here. So the one property that is improved by preparing this material with varied cobalt content with lower size of the uh, uh, ceramic is the fracture toughness improvement. Another, sorry. OK, so let me give you a very, very famous, you know, research study of nano nano composite. If you remember in the beginning, I classified these composites of ceramics, right? One of them is a nano nano. What do you mean by nano nano? Both matrix as well as the reinforcement are in the nano size, right? Now, what is so great about such composite? Now you see here the silicon nitride is the matrix. Silicon carbide is the reinforcement. That means nano sized silicon carbide particles are added into the matrix of the silicon nitride. So you get a composite of nano nano silicon nitride silicon carbide composite. How did you prepare? Actually, you prepared by hot pressing of this powder mixture at 1700 to 1800 Celsius in nitrogen atmosphere, where the silicon carbide is dispersed in the matrix of silicon nitride. This is a TEM image. So you can see the silicon carbide dispersed. Dispersed, dispersed silicon, I mean, this this silicon carbide nano phase here. You see, this is 10 nanometer micron bar, right? So you can see here even this arrangement of atom that is that infringements are also shown here. So, so you uh, the other other image shows HRTM image, right? High resolution transmission electron microscopy image which shows the interface between this particle and then the grain. So this, sorry, this grain of silicon carbide and then the silicon nitride grain. So silicon carbide grain and silicon nitride grain. Here you see this grain boundary, right? This is the grain boundary. So, so you can see here, absolutely one-to-one -one bonding of this grain of silicon carbide to silicon nitride is done, right? So you actually see here, there is no grain boundary phase. So there is no impurity phase between this grain. When there is no impurity and there is a direct bonding of this silicon carbide reinforcement phase grain to silicon nitride matrix grain, that means a very, very strong bonding, isn't it? 
so what ha why it is so important such a direct bonding now again you 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 can actually realize if you see the application of such composite this composite is applicable in uh, creep resistant uh, com uh, creep resistant component material components right you can see creep creep ha happens as i told previously in one case one of the mechanisms for the creep is by grain boundary sliding or cavitation so those are caused by the softening of this grain boundary grain boundary impurity phase right grain boundary is a different phase than the grain of this or the grain is a impurity phase so so this softening of the grain boundary phase does not occur here because there is no such grain boundary impurity phase here there is a direct bonding right if there is no impurity phase such a strong bonding strong bonding will not degrade this temperature even at a higher te higher temp uh, degrade this material even at a higher temperature so no strong degradation up to almost like 1400 celsius compared to against 1000 celsius for monolithic silicon silicon nitride material so this circle data indicates silicon nitride this triangular data also indicates silicon nitride with a different sintering term conditions right but here this this uh, hollow circle data indicates the silicon nitride with silicon carbide nano nano composite this is fracture strength right the the uh, strength up to yeah strength at the fracture so you can see at around 1000 celsius this monolithic one degrades right because there is a softening so whereas here in a composite of silicon nitride silicon carbide this will still it is no such a drastic degradation of course there is a softening but there, there is a degradation here but is a continuously there is no such so fast you know slip steeper degradation until it achieves 1400 celsius now there is a benefit of temperatures you know almost like 400 celsius temperature like when when you are using such a material for turbine applications where very high energies high temperatures are generated right so the material will degrade easily so so if you use this silicon nitride silicon carbide nano nano composite you can use this material even up to 1400 celsius without having such a degradation you see the temp the strength levels are much higher right here at room temperature so here it's like from 1000 mpa here and this is almost like 1400 or 1300 mpa you you still have this more than 1000 mpa at 1400 celsius whereas at 1400 this normal monolithic silicon nitride has a strength close to 600 or 500 mpa so you will have such an increase in improved strength of this material if you if you prepare a nano nano composite how could you prepare by hot pressing right this is not possible by conventional sintering you need to prepare such an advanced uh you know material with uh, activated sintering technique so with the increase in the silicon carbide the fracture strength also increases and attains a maximum value almost like silicon carbide 20 percent 20 volume percent okay so the direct bonding of the silicon carbide with silicon nitride decreases the slow crack growth caused by the softening of grain boundary phase of silicon nitride so you will get a large benefit of applying this material even at a high temperature of 1400 compared to 1000 celsius in monolithic case okay so it's very important uh, you know research study so another example because i am just looking at oxide oxide or non oxide oxide to non oxide kind of class composite so earlier was non oxide non oxide nano nano composite now you can see aluminum oxide oxide material with a non oxide silicon carbide reinforced so you can see here all this nano phases are inside the grain of this alumina are along the grain boundary so so this is this kind of microstructure is prepared by hot pressing of powder mixture containing mullite aluminum and carbon at 1800 celsius mullite is nothing but aluminum oxide silicon oxide okay alumina silicate so mullite aluminum and carbon at 1800 and and use it to develop aluminum oxide with 18 volume percent silicon carbide nano composite so such a microstructure material will give a strength of almost 800 mpa 
and moderate fracture toughness of 3 mp root meter so reactive hard pressing gives you such a good microstructure another good example where you will be interested to see machinable ceramics so ceramics are brittle machining is very difficult right but there there are are certain ceramics which you can prepare which uh, uh, to make them machined right so machinable ceramics can be prepared one example is aluminum oxide with nano boron nitride reinforcement this boron nitride is hexagonal boron nitride you can you can understand there is another important boron nitride cubic boron nitride cubic boron nitride is very hard have hexagonal boron nitride is softer and 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 hexagonal boron nitride has a layered structure right so because of the uniform distribution of this hexagonal boron nitride in the matrix of alpha, alpha alumina actually so you you can have a improved fracture toughness right from 2.5 mp root meter to 5.5 mp root meter so it is more than double improvement with boron nitride reinforcement hexagonal boron nitride being a softer and the hexagonal layered structure it will facilitate sliding or machining so the fracture toughness can be improved so the crack deflection is much more so the fracture toughness is improved because of the improved fracture toughness you can make some drills like this in 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 the block right so this block could be drilled not only drilling you can even prepare such a complex geometries by machining by uh, by preparing is different composite material of silicon nitride with 15% boron nitride so you can see again silicon nitride grain with a boron nitride grain and the interface is so so strong because there is a direct bonding between grain and grain so you can make such drills or even make such a complex shapes so so the difficulty of this you know uh, limitation of lower fracture toughness can be removed by applying such a, uh you know hard pressing strategy of this nano ceramic material development okay so let me just have a recap because we are going towards uh, going we are actually going towards advanced sintering techniques for developing nano ceramics to have an improvement in certain properties if you can follow this that is the very very much very good okay so another important sintering technique is very faster rate of heating so only pressure application via heating like that you did in hot pressing does not always ensure grain growth restriction to nano crystalline resins some some materials of ceramics require even other technique to restrict the grain growth okay so so only only pressing and heating will not result into the nano crystalline resins so in those cases how do you manage you manage by understanding the science behind the grain growth if you apply faster rate of heating alpha being a fast rate of heating like this g indicates the grain size the g at the temperature t equal to this g not not is the starting grain size right then it is uh, this grain uh, g not plus g this this constant material constant by alpha which is a heating rate integral from t not to t exponential of minus qb qg by kt dt so qg is the activation energy for the grain to grow okay so if you apply such an arrhenius type of equation and then and then add this term to the grain size then you will have an idea about how much is the grain size so you you can see here this k is the boltzmann's constant t is the absolute scale and uh, and m is a constant g not small g not is a material constant okay so the difference between this is the grain size growth right this is the grain size this is grain size at different temperatures so the difference is the growth now if you apply a technique with a faster rate of heating then the grain growth will be less simply isn't it so that means faster heating is necessary is necessary to restrict the grain growth in more efficient way how do you do that further lowering of sintering temperature and holding time with the faster rate of heating is possible 
with spark plasma centering technique okay so what is this let us just have a brief overview of this spark plasma centering technique this is an advanced centering technique where pressing and heating similar to hot pressing is done in addition to that heating is achieved by passing current through electrically conducting pressure dies and our conducting powders okay that means you are using a graphite die and graphite punch those are conducting for the current so you apply certain current right and the current flows through the conducting medium if the powder is conducting then the current also flow through the through the powder conducting whereas if it is not conducting current flows from this to this uh, you know uh, via this dies and punches only so what do you do by passing the current in addition to pressing and heating you are passing this current when the current is passed there is a resistance heating right resistance heating so the material resist the passage of this current so there happens uh, you know heating so you will have an advantage of heating the material where you require where do you actually require you require the powder powder contact only particle to particle contact right like this real micro uh, real real photograph this is particle this is a necking necking side necking area region so you require only heating at this at this place not entire powder compact isn't it because you when you have a heating temperature very high here the diffusion happens easily and this is what you require rather than losing the energy by heating the entire thing isn't it so the neck region will be heated instantly by applying current so basically in addition to heating and pressing you are also applying current the current can be applied a, by pulse other particles are activated by pulse voltage and resistance centering under pressure by application of a steady dc current that results into immediate you know temperature rise at these necking regions okay so it is not total volume of the you know uh, uh, powder heated to such a high level it is only the neck region and internally the heating is happening because of the resistance heating so in normal conventional centering techniques the total chamber is heated and then the powder is is heated right so there is the indirect heating whereas here the material itself is heated in addition to the indirect heating any how you are giving to the chamber so pressing heating as well as current passing current all three together will result into immediate increase in the temperature and then results into sintering very fast okay so using high amount of pressures like few tens of megapascals and electric current localized necking occurs due to this joule heating so in this process the temperature rises very fast faster than conventional centering and hot pressing even and the densification of the total powder compact is completed within few minutes right heating rates achieved by this technique is few hundreds of kelvin per minute okay and centering temperatures can be as low as 200 to 300 celsius celsius compared to what you require for the uh, conventional centering technique right for example alumina al2o3 ceramics are sintered at 1800 celsius the same density levels can be obtained by doing this spark plasma centering at 1500 to 1600 celsius you will obtain a lower you will obtain the same density at a lower temperature okay so is very that is the that is the advantage at the same time you do not need to hold it right generally holding at higher temperature is done to have a homogenization of the microstructure whereas this is done the temperature rises fast at the necking region where you actually require so there is no point of even holding over there right so the holding of few hours what you did in the conventional pressureless centering or hot pressing right in conventional centering we heat at a higher temperature for 8 hours 10 hours like that convention hot pressing we heat at the higher temperature uh, uh, for almost like a few to 2 to 6 hours 8 hours so but the heating is is the heating is holded held 
almost like zero to five minutes in this technique. So that means faster heating, that is 600 K per minute or some SPS machines are available with 1000 K per minute even, right? So such a faster rate of heating do not require longer time to reach the peak temperature. At the same time, after reaching the peak temperature, you are not holding. So by doing this faster rate of heating, not holding at higher temperature, you are actually completing the total process of the sintering for one sample in almost like 20 to 30 minutes. Imagine in a conventional sintering technique, you require almost 20 to 22 hours for preparing one sample because conventional sintering, pressureless sintering, the heating rates are few tens of Celsius per minute, like 5 to 10, 5 to 10 Celsius per minute. You cannot go even more than 10, right? 5 to 10 degrees Celsius per minute. That means if you require 1700 Celsius to reach from room temperature, you, you, you see how many hours you, re you, you require, right? By here, 600 Kelvin per minute, some few hundreds of Celsius per minute is a fast, is the, is the heating rate. So you do not require such a long time. Even after reaching the temperature of peak, you do not need to hold it. So the total processing time is reduced to few tens of minutes compared to few tens of hours in conventional centering. So for one sample, almost one day in conventional pressureless centering, whereas in SPS, you can obtain in 20 minutes to 30 minutes. That is the beauty of this technique. OK, that is with respect to operation. OK, then what you achieve by by doing this faster rate of heating and lower centering temperature holding away for a longer time, you can restrict the grain size. That is what you require for preparing a nano ceramic material. So basically, there are three driving forces in centering of by spark plus or something. Resistance heating or joules heating, pressure application and surface activation. So the continuous application of electric current through the sintering periods lead to sustained activation of the powder particle surfaces that triggers the sintering to occur in very, very short times. OK, so if you understand the concept behind this activated sintering of SPS, now let us just have a few examples of materials prepared by such technique. So this is tungsten carbide binderless. What do you mean by binderless? No cobalt, right? Cobalt is a binder which binds the tungsten carbide grains. No binder. Actually, cobalt is a metallic material that alf that increases the sintering in the liquid phase sintering way. That is fine. But by adding a metallic material in a ceramic, you are actually decreasing the performance of ceramic material, isn't it? High temperature applications can be restricted. So the metallic material, of course, metallic material combined with some ceramic, there forms a solid solution, but still it cannot be compared with this. This is the tungsten carbide ceramic. So high temperature applications are limited by this metallic binder. So you have to get rid of that to have a very, very hard material and can be used at high temperature. For that, you need to get, our, get rid of this cobalt binder. So but preparing such binderless tungsten carbide is very, very difficult by conventional set technique because that has a tungsten carbide has a strong coal and bonding the diffusion coefficient, you know, self diffusion coefficient of a material, right? So such a self diffusion coefficient is very, very less. So you require to give large amount of thermal energy longer times. So so basically centering is difficult, but same material without binder at the same time, nano crystalline region of nano crystalline tungsten carbide binderless can be prepared by spark plasma centering. PAS is another name for the spark plasma. So you can obtain such a grains like this is 50 nanometers, right? Close to 100 nanometers is the maximum size of this grain without having this cobalt binder. So nano size at the same time, no cobalt. So you can have a very large improvement in the properties that can be used for applying in high temperature. OK, this is another example. Oxide with the carbide, aluminum oxide with titanium carbide, nano nano composite. This is high energy ball milled powder mixture is spark plasma sintered, then you can uh, you obtain, you know, this alumina, alumina around 400 nanometers and titanium carbide is close to 150 to 200 nanometers. So this such a structure of 
very very fine structure of alumina titanium carbide composite exhibits high fracture strength uh, around 950 mega megapascal okay this is another example where silicon carbide whiskers are reinforced in alumina composite so you 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 need to understand the alumina alumina actually uh, transforms from gamma to alpha at a temperature of 1200 alpha you know um, alpha uh, what you can say uh, i mean uh, sorry this gamma uh, alpha is not preferred you need to have this uh, gamma right because of the inferior properties of this alpha so but in conventional centering technique you need to go for higher temperatures higher temperatures so definitely this transformation occurs gamma to alpha more than 1200 and then you will end up with a uh, alpha trans alpha as a as a uh, rea as a product okay but in spark plasma centering centering could be done at 1125 much lower than 1200 no transformation is possible so you will definitely have a gamma you started with gamma powder you end with gamma ceramic right with 20 percent silicon carbide whisker that means uh, nano crystalline matrix of nano nano size of the matrix with silicon carbide whisker whiskers are very very strong so you can obtain strong and hard materials by this sps so this is another example as i'll leave this so uh yeah this is a good example zirconia toughened alumina nano composite why is it so important because alumina the hardness is around 19 to 20 gigapascal monolithic but sir, zirconia actually, hardness sir, is sir. sorry uh, sir uh, actually we have scheduled a quiz sir after this uh, maybe if the session is completed then uh, from actually 9 to 9 30 we have intimated for quiz uh, for this week one yes a daily program. so just i'm just intimating yeah sure sure but i'll complete in few minutes okay sure sir thank you so zirconia is less harder but it is tougher okay toughness is high if among the ceramics community zirconia material will is having a fracture toughness close to uh, 8 to 10 mpa root meter no ceramic material monolithic has such a higher fracture toughness so toughness fracture toughness of alumina can be improved by toughening with zirconia this is very famous example for structural applications so this could be obtained nano nano crystalline material can be obtained uh, matrix size can be restricted to nano size by sps high energy ball milling of this powder mixture and then sps okay so you can obtain like 15 gigapascal but toughness is increased to almost 9 mpa root meter so monolithic alumina around 3 to 4 mpa root meter it is more than double so while strength and hardness can be enhanced to relative to conventional ceramics the most significant outcome is the threshold increase in the fracture toughness also incorporation of the softer phase of zirconia to enhance the fracture toughness is possible without degrading much this property of hardness okay so i'll just take few minutes uh, why such strengthening happens in nano ceramic composites science behind that the strengthening is mainly from the refinement of the grain strengthening also from the reduction in the flaw size that means finer the flaw size smaller is the critical crack size what do you mean by critical crack size you require such certain crack size above which only crack propagates spontaneously to give a brittle fracture right immediate propagation that leads to fracture that is a characteristic of ceramic material that means every ceramic material has its critical crack size if you have a cracks beyond above the size then definitely there is a fracture you want to maintain below that so finer is the particle size smaller is the critical size of the crack and also strengthening occurs from the residual stress distribution so like this reduction in the flaw size like you have a flaw of like this right and it it is postulated that a critical below a critical length scale the crystals become almost like insensitive to the flaws and behave as nearly perfect so you can get an improved fracture toughness or strength like you can see here this there, there the crack is actually deflecting right when there is a different different material here crack is deflected so crack is also bridged from one to one by crack is bridged so because of the 
uh, nano composite formation leads to significant improvement in the fracture toughness because of the improved crack deflections and crack bridging okay so this is one uh, last example just like to show here transgranular fracture in ceramic nano composite this is monolithic alumina this is silicon carbide nano phase uh, nano uh, uh, de, uh, nano particle reinforced alumina ceramic composite so here the fracture surface is more like intergranular the, the grain is completely removed grain boundary is weaker but here grain boundary is made stronger by dispersing such silicon carbide nano particles so the crack has to propagate through the grain right so it requires larger amount of energy to fracture than this one that means the fracture toughness is increased so once the fracture toughness is increased then you have an improvement in the property right there are some other properties like wear wear can also be reduced by reducing the size right you can see this grain size reduced from 2.2 to 400 nanometers the material worn out is also reduced in some wear conditions because of the less reduction okay so uh, okay. this is one of our studies uh, where silicon nitride formed on the silicon carbide particles by heating this powder uh, in a nitrogen atmosphere at different temperatures of 1400 to 1500 so we could able to get silicon nitride on the silicon carbide so such a dual phase microstructure will uh, dual phase microstructure development is recently patented now from our group and that can actually this such a reinforcement in aluminum alloy can reduce the wear okay so that was one of the applications so finally i stop here so basically if you if you want to carry some message from this lecture that please understand the development of bulk nano crystalline ceramics without secondary phase reinforcement can be successfully achieved by our advanced sintering techniques like spark plasma sintering or hard pressing or like that whereas judicious combination of novel powder synthesis techniques with the sintering processes can be helpful in maintaining nano crystalline grains in the densified nano ceramics right so also superior mechanical properties can be obtained compared to those of conventional ceramics however to date no significant improvement of fracture toughness could be achieved in nano crystalline monolith so only composites are mostly preferred for improving the toughness fracture toughness to couple the improvements from advanced processing techniques with fracture toughness improvement nano composite design is recommended so that is where nano ceramic composites stand as a alternative you know so finally in this lecture i introduced to you ceramic materials and also have given some photographs of applications of oxides and nano oxides and then mainly we studied about the sintering concept and and the major issues in processing and properties of nano ceramic composites and nano ceramics are discussed uh, uh, and then some case study on the nano structure develop dual phase silicon carbide silicon nitride nitro structure from our group otherwise i i took many examples from the literature to make you understand the significance of such nano ceramics nano ceramic composites with respect to property improvement and thank you so much finally thank you very much sir uh, yeah. maybe some questions if there are any from participants please please uh, if you have any clarifications good evening sir yeah good evening sir uh, in two stage sintering you have mentioned uh, after reaching a temperature t1 suddenly you need to decrease the up to uh, t2 right yes lower uh, temperature this rapid decrease in temperature uh, will causes any brittle in uh, chances for brittleness uh, you mean to say this crack propagation right because yes. of the thermal expansion no basically uh, you are heating it and then cooling right cooling yes. and then maintaining at that lower temperature for longer time so you have to cool it to only such an extent not to very low temperatures where you ex you you expect such a, such a uh, cracking okay immediate thermal shock so we are not giving such a thermal shock that is why t2 is very close to t1 if you remember those examples 1300 52 
1250 or 1150 something like that okay it's not like decreased by 1000 celsius or 500 celsius like that okay so the thermal shock resistance is is taken care okay sir and another thing is uh, if uh, the gray if the uh, grain size is low that means i think uh, if, i think we will get a num number of grain boundaries yes uh, is there any relation between number of grain boundaries and hardness because number of grain boundaries are more uh, hardness is going to increase yes yes that is what alpech relation shows if you if you really count that you know the fra area fraction occupied by this grain boundaries will be improved right you ha you have a unit microstructure right okay. you you are reducing the grain size that means grain boundary fraction is increased in the same unit microstructure for example in one unit microstructure you have 100 grains you reduce the grain size it will become 1000 okay? okay so so those number of grains that means the area fraction within the unit microstructure is improved is is increased that causes hindrance to the movement of dislocation so the deformation is not possible very easily difficult to deform difficult to deform means deformation resistance increase that is nothing but your hardness increased and sir you have mentioned because of residual stresses the crack propagation will be prevented right yeah but you need to you need to play with that nature of the residual stress okay so if the residual stress is tensile crack will propagate if the residual stress is compressive trans yes. uh, crack will be restricted so actually this so, residual stress is, is advantage or disadvantage for a mechanical point of view yeah definitely if you have a composite definitely you need to may you need to select a reinforcement for that composite in such a way that the crack is restricted in propagation okay so you need to maintain that residual stress always in the compressive mode okay, okay. yeah but every phase will be subjected to different different types of stresses either tensile or compressive so yes. you need to you need to maintain that by prop selecting a proper reinforcement <laughs> actually if the membrane is subjected to fatigue loading then how it is possible sir sorry which is membrane yes yes okay if the nature of loading is fatigue in nature mm. uh, then simultaneous change in uh, no, stress nature from tensile to compressive or compressive to tensile yes so in the in those conditions you know you need you generally we don't prefer this ceramic materials if the, there is a large difference in the loading okay so uh, because of this uh, fatigue alternative cycles of loading and loading there is a premature cracking okay if the cracking size it increases beyond the critical level definitely propagation will be spontaneous and fracture happens easily right so uh you need to take care about the loading you know the level of loading in that yes sir how are you prepared a microstructure so that you know crack is arrested as i told you the crack deflection crack bridging or some uh you know ductile metal bridging so you, you you prepare a composite in such a way like if you are using some fiber whiskers then energy will be used for pulling out or bond debonding something like that so not not for propagating through the matrix so you need to design the mic microstructure in a such a way that it will resist such a, you know fatigue effect okay sir thank you sir welcome i think no other questions sir yeah i understand because this is probably the new topic i don't know is any one other uh, expert uh, uh, you know has covered this materials okay i do not know so otherwise so, it, yeah all the lectures are being on this uh, nano um, synthesis of nano materials uh, characterization only sir in the applications and today's uh, is another uh, beautiful session covering on ceramics part yeah. so so far uh, no there is no session on uh, ceramics area sir Yes, yes. nano ceramics and uh, the techniques that are followed for uh, synthesis of this particularly the last one spark plasma sintering is, is an excellent technique for producing 
the novel materials. Yes. Uh, on behalf of uh, the mechanical engineering department of uh, JNTU Gurjada University, Gurjada Regional University, uh, we would like to extend our sincere thanks to you, sir. Uh, so this is uh, AICT Atal Academy sponsored two weeks uh, hybrid mode uh, FTP program. So we, we are very much thankful for uh, sharing our valuable expertise. So thank you very much, sir. Uh, right now the participants are uh, active. Actually, I shared the link uh, for the quiz. This, okay. this is the week, week one uh, quiz program. Quiz should be submitted by the participants. So I request all the participants to submit their online quiz. So I have shared in the chat box. I have shared in the uh, Google that uh, WhatsApp and even emailed that uh, to all our email IDs. Also, I welcome all the participants for the offline program uh, from Monday onwards, next five days. So while coming to the college, I request all the participants to bring their registration forms, signed hard copies of their registration forms and submit in the Department of Mechanical Engineering, JNTU. So I request all the participants to do uh, things what is required as per adult FTP guidelines. So shall we submit it on Tuesday? It's OK. Yeah. Mostly, if it is possible, try to submit on Monday. Otherwise, uh, if not possible, submit by Tuesday at least. OK, OK, sir. Thank you, sir. Once again, thank you for giving this opportunity and thank you all participants uh, for your patience uh, hearing. Yeah, with the rest, uh, you know limited time, uh, I try to cover the basics as well as some research studies so that you have a, a whole spectrum of this nano ceramic materials understanding. Uh, I hope I made justice to this session. Okay, yeah. Yes, sir. Very extensive inputs are given in this area, sir. Very vastly yeah. covered in the short time. Actually, thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Have a nice day. Thank you very much. Can I close now? Yeah, yes, sir. Thank you. Okay, okay. Thank you. Thank you all. All the best. Thank you, sir.